Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons, I'm Emma and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint a demon prince for Warhammer 40,000 or Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Uh, before we get going, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Game Factor who has sponsored this video. They are just now launching a new campaign for their cool new base adapters, second generation base adapters, and I will get back to them later on. But first of all, let's get back to the painting. So I start off with a model that's been primed using the White Scars Primer from Citadel. And then I grab a contrast paint. This one is called Eldari Emerald. It's sort of a nice um, turquoise greenish color. And I take another contrast paint. This one is Black Legion. And I just start to paint in some leaf designs or flames or stained glass window thingies, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it really has a set name. Um, but if you've seen any of my other painting videos for my uh, Chaos Space Marine Army, you'll know kind of what I am talking about here. Uh, and you can see I'm just doing it sort of freehand, trying to make sure I have a nice design where each shape is um, not so big that it gets a little bit clumsy to look at, but at the same time also not so small that it'll be really, really difficult to fill out later on. Then I take a paint from Huge Miniatures, and this one is called Pulse Wave Pink, and I paint the outline of the uh, shape here. And you, the, um, the Pulse Wave Pink, along with the other paints I'm using from Huge Miniatures, are fluorescent paints, which is really cool, uh, because it means it'll glow under a UV light later on. And if you've seen on any of my other Chaos Space Marine painting videos, I don't usually do this on a green background. I usually do this on a pink background, but I thought it would be cool to have the green underneath as a contrasting color and see where that would take us. Then I take Cyber Pink also from a Huge Miniatures and I do a sort of lighter edge highlight at the top of each shape, trying to make it look like they um, there is more sort of light coming from above hitting them, um, even though of course this is very stylized and not going to be looking natural at all. And then lastly I just take a little bit of white, this is matte white from the Army Painter, and I touch uh, the top of each little shape. Then I go back to the Black Legion contrast paint, and I retrace um, the original uh, design, making sure that each flame leaf shape it looks nice and sharp against the rest of them so really just um, just making sure everything is really neat and tidy because I think that makes a lot of difference when you're going for such such a stylized pattern as this one. Then I take some Turdon Turquoise which is a darker turquoise contrast color and I just touch that to the middle of each flame design uh, to give a little bit of a contrast, uh, just contrasting look, uh, which I think sort of highlights the overall design. Then for the wings, I use first Aethomatic Blue, which is a lighter contrast color, and then Croxical Scales, which is sort of the same color, just, just a little bit more intense. And I do a quick wet blend. I want the uh, tips of the wings to be a little bit lighter and then the place here where all the sort of rips from the wings come together to be a little bit darker. There isn't a sort of really good naturalistic reason for it. I just think it looks cool that they don't have the exact same colors all the way through. Then for the membranes on the wings, I choose to go with first a pink color. This is Volopus Pink, a contrast color. And then I go for a second contrast color, and this one is called Magma Drop Flame. And I just do a really quick wet blend between these two. Um, it's not going to be completely flawless because, well, a quick wet blend never really is. But I'm going to be covering this entire thing with a lot of texture on top, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and I'm a bit of a lazy painter, so if I can do something quickly rather than slowly, I will. Then I take the Terran Turquoise once again, and I start drawing in some uh, dark outlines next to each of the, um, of the bones and the wings, and then also on the wing mem membrane themselves, both uh, doing some freehand and also accentuating the texture that is already sculpted on the wings. Once I'm happy with the 
uh, shadows that I've added with the turd on turquoise, I go back to the pulse wave pink from Huge Miniatures and I start adding in just some horizontal lines along the wing membranes here, as you can see. Um, again, both adding some texture that wasn't there before and also accentuating the texture that was already there. As you can see, I mostly paint the pink uh, lines uh, at the edge of the membranes, but I also take care to just draw them out into the orange part of the membrane a little bit. I don't want to end up with a, a situation where there's a really sharp divide between the pink and the orange. I sort of want them to blend relatively nicely into each other. Then I take an orange color and this one is also from Huge Miniatures and this is called Laser Orange. And I uh, do exactly the same thing as I did with the first pink color. Um, just trying to add a lot of nice little horizontal lines to add some texture to the membranes. Then I take some cyber pink also from Huge Miniatures and I use that to just sort of highlight what I have already done with the Pulse Wave pink and the Laser Orange. Just trying to make the um, make the texture on the wings pop even more. And lastly, I take some Flash Kids Yellow. This is from Citadel. And I use that on the sort of orangey parts of the wings. And um, again, to make it pop a little bit more. Um, I've yet to find a really nice vibrant yellow neon color. Um, the, um, the yellow neon colors are usually just sort of greenish and I didn't want that here so I went for a completely standard uh, yellow color. Then I have decided to um, paint over the original skin tone. I painted the skin on the model using the Croxical scales because I thought that would make a nice base for um, painting blue skin but it didn't really work out and then I watched a video by Vince Venturella about how he paints blue skin and I thought that was a really neat idea. So I underpainted it with a um, magenta color and this is Murderous Magenta from P3 and then I started going back over it with a color from Vallejo. This one is called Magic Blue. And I more or less followed uh, the advice given by Vince Ventrella in his video on painting blue skin. So I'll leave a link to that in the show notes and you can go follow his advice because he is much, much better at painting blue skin than I am. And I also think he has perhaps spent a little bit more time painting the skin on his model, or at least he's just better at it than I am. Um, because after all, this is for a gaming piece. This is for a model that I'm going to be putting on a tabletop in an army. And so I didn't want to spend like 20 hours shading and highlighting and uh, blending skin. I wanted something that look, looks nice, but I don't want something that is, you know, a really high uh, painting competition standard. So, but what I did is I basically painted the skin using a... Uh, lighter and lighter tones of blue and then at the end mix the blue with a little bit of actually the neon yellow greenish tone to make a sort of very nice vibrant not quite white color that works really well as a highlight on blue again an idea i got from uh, from vince's video um though i don't think he used a neon color i think he used something else but um the neon color was what i had on hand so there you go before we get to the tutorial for the base, I just want to show you the campaign that War Factor has just launched for their second generation base adapters. The first generation of base adapters are in two pieces and you glue them onto the model. But uh, the second generation are um, base adapters that have been 3D printed and they are printed to a very high quality. And that means they come in just one piece and you can actually use them on and off. So if you have a model that sometimes you want to have a smaller base and sometimes a bigger base, base you can actually do that with these, which I think is pretty cool. And you can see some of them you can get with some really cool different uh, um, names and titles and stuff using all sorts of fonts, which I think is quite fun. I mean, and you can be really sensible and, you know, write, get the title or something on a model, but you could also come up with all sorts of silly names, which I mean, that is definitely what I would be 
perhaps most inclined to do. Uh, you can also get some uh, trays, uh, which could be really usable, for instance, for stuff like Warhammer the Old World, where you have these big regiments that you're moving around and you can put have models that are on square bases and then you can have them on round bases with the base adapters and so on. Yeah, they have all sorts of cool things and I think you should go take a look for yourself. Um, I'll leave a link to the campaign in the show notes uh, and uh, I'll also leave, leave a link to the War Factor website where you can check out their other cool products. So uh, yeah, go check out the, the campaign, support it if you would like and uh, thank you so much to War Factor for sponsoring this video. So the Demon Prince comes, of course, with a hero rock because, I mean, he's a Demon Prince, so he needs a big giant rock to rest one of his feet on, otherwise it would be completely wrong for Warhammer. And so I do a quick web blend using first Jant and Yellow and then Griff Hound Orange, um, just to give a nice sort of uh, a texture to work from. And then I add a little bit of Gore Grunt of Fur to just uh, darken up some of the crevices and areas on the rock. Then I give it a quick uh, layer of dry brushing using Moon Dust from Army Painter. It is uh, quite a nice desaturated light yellow color that I like for stuff like this. And once I'm done with that, I use a little bit of Wraith Bone to just pick out the uh, edge of the details on top of the rock. I ended up regretting the last layer of highlight a little bit because I thought now it all looked a little bit too pastel and a little bit too bland. So I went back with the Gorgrunts of Fur and redid some of the uh, darker parts and just adding a little bit more contrast to the whole look of the rock. I then took some striking scorpion green, also contrast paint, and I added some Achillean green, which is sort of a turquoise color. Uh, it looks just more or less black here, but it's actually a turquoise color. And then also some Gorgrunts of Fur to the mix. And then I did a quick wet blend. The idea is I want it to look like some sort of toxic waste um, with different kinds of depths and different kinds of materials in it. Just something that looks really unclean and unhealthy and awful um, because I think that fits with the whole theme of the Chaos Space Marines. I then took some splash gel water effects from Green Stuff World and added that to the base. And I usually use a palette knife, as you can see here, for doing water effects on bases, because I think it's very easy to get a nice sort of realistic structure or texture in the water effects with a palette knife. Then as soon as I'm happy with the texture of the water effects, I grab my uh, demon prince and I place him with one of his feet on top of the hero rock and his other feet firmly planted into the green goo. And that's because I want to make sure that once it all dries up, it doesn't look like he's standing on top of the goo, but that he is standing with his feet firmly planted in the goo and is sort of uh, more firmly situated into the base. Then you can see here the base adapter that I got from War Factor. And unfortunately, the camera here didn't really pick up the uh, writing on the edge of the base, but, I'll, uh, but you'll be able to see that later on. I'm painting it black just to make it look like any other uh, base rim that I have. And as I said, this is a 3D printed, but it's sort of a waxy 3D print. So it feels a little bit different than other 3D prints. And it's really, really uh, lovely uh, quality to work with. As you can see here, I'm painting now the name I have chosen for the base. It's, as I said, 3D printed onto the base. And I decided to call him Lord Fluff uh, because he will be part of my Chaos Space Marine Army and they are all called uh, the Cotton Candy Corsairs. And so I thought it would be uh, make a lot of sense to have a Lord Fluff as one of the commanding officers. And here you can see what it looks like with some text on one of the base adapters uh, without painting or anything. Once it's all dry, I take my model and as you can see, I just take the base adapters, pull it gently to either side and then place the smaller base inside it. Um, it fits pretty well, but I think as you can see, it has a tendency to have a slight gap. So I think for bigger models, it makes sense to glue the base adapter to the base. Whereas on smaller models, you can see here with a much smaller base and a smaller base adapter, it works really well and it fits quite snugly around the base. So I think there you can easily just have them um, placed on like this and you can remove them if you want to. So uh, here you can see the finished model. 
and I am uh, I'm actually quite happy with them. It took a whole bunch of time painting this model just because there are so many details and wings and skin and armor and textures of all si sorts of things. Um, but it was fun. Just uh, yeah, a big project. And here, of course, you can also see him in all his uh, fluorescent glory. Uh, uh, when I'm painting using uh, fluorescent paints, of course, he glows under UV light, which has absolutely no practical value, but I cannot help but find it funny every time I, I do a, a painting tutorial. <laughs> I'm also quite pleased with the font I chose for the base adapter where it says Lord Fluff because it's sort of like a gooey dripping paint style thing which looks very very elegant uh, for a, a you know a prince of the KL Space Marines so of course he needs dripping paint from his, the edge of his paint base. I don't know I thought it would also match the sort of gooey stuff green stuff on the base a little bit uh, and just to make sure everyone knows that uh, this is supposed to be fun and uh, and light-hearted uh, and that's the whole uh, premise of uh, of my painting style and of my armies before i end this video i of course want to say a huge thank you to my patrons who are helping support this channel and first of all to the demon raid thomas masson to the demon crawlers andre correa anthony polcastro and to the demon knights tj kubiak mando project starcon 85 and Espear. thank you so much for supporting this channel it really means the world to me uh, if you would also like to be one of these awesome patrons i will leave a link to my patreon in the uh, in, in the description below as well so uh, thank you so much for watching guys and if you have any suggestions or comments or ideas i really hope you'll leave them in the comment section also remember you can follow me as dyson demons on twitter and instagram as well so uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.